I've been held up at gunpoint twice in my life. Once in Washington, D.C., and once in Darfur, Sudan. Now, one of those places is a nation's capital and a destination visited by millions of tourists each year. And one of those places is a remote region of East Africa, known for its prolonged civil war. To me, one of those places was safe, and the other was not. My name is Kelsey Hoppe, and I work in risk management. This means that I help organizations keep their employees and volunteers safe, whether they're crossing the street or traveling around the world. And I've thought a lot about how we as normal people and non-security experts can engage with our safety and security when we're traveling. By the time the DC and Darfur incidences happened, I'd already spent the previous 15 years traveling and working in the former Soviet Union, Southeast Asia, and much of Europe. And I'd taken a pretty typical approach to my safety, which was stay away from unsafe places, and I'd be fine. I wanted to be safe, I just didn't really think I had much control over it. I treated safe like a place on a map. Washington, D.C. was safe. America was safe. Iraq and Chechnya, unsafe. But as I was confronted with a teenager with a gun in D.C., I was forced to, real, to uh, reconsider how I had concluded that. This was one of my safe places. Have you ever asked yourself this question, where is safe? Perhaps you're asking it right now because places that you'd formerly thought of as safe, London, Paris, Las Vegas, seem to be under attack by terrorists. Or maybe you're asking it because you've just always wanted to go somewhere, like Cairo or Casablanca or Miami. But the world just seems a little too dangerous at the moment. How can we know where is safe? Safety is a primal human need and a core driver of who we are. In the 1940s, American psychologist Abraham Maslow created a hierarchy of human needs. And he put safety as our second most important human need. It comes right after our physiological needs for food, air, water, and sleep. Being and feeling safe is actually more important to us than being loved by our family and friends. It's that important. So it makes sense that we care about our safety when we're traveling, and it makes sense that we care about the safety of our family and friends when they're away from home. But the problem arises when we misjudge safe and dangerous because we think that safe is a place. What being held up at gunpoint forced me to confront was that safe isn't a place. Everywhere, Every place has threats. Everywhere. In D.C., there are men with guns. And in Darfur, there are also men with guns. The threat of gun violence, of being held up or shot, is present in both of those places. But the difference was, I hadn't thought about it in D.C., because D.C. was my home. And in our homes, in our familiar surroundings and routines, we've become accustomed to dealing with certain threats. And we have done it so well and so many times that we don't think of them as threats. And we don't think about dealing with them as dealing with dangerous situations. Think about this. Today, to get here, you and I ran a gauntlet of threats, and any one of them could have killed us. But we managed those. So, we're walking down the stairs, we put away our phone, most of us. We held on to the handrail. We get in the car, we put on a seatbelt. We followed the rules of the road. We're going to cross the street, we look both ways. You and I manage the threats in our everyday life incredibly well. 
which is why we're alive. And what seems common sense and second nature to most of us can be incredibly new and different to someone who comes to our homes or communities from someplace else. Bruce Schneier, a security technologist, mentions this in his TED talk when he's talking about someone in East Africa who knows how to deal with the threat of being attacked by lions because they work on a game reserve. Now, to you and I, lion attack seems really dangerous and exotic, but to someone else in their home environment, it's perfectly normal. You deal with certain threats in Bristol. Someone else deals with different threats in Kabul, Afghanistan. But no place is threat-free. No place is inherently safe. Now, we might think, okay, but surely some places are safer than others. Surely the UK is safer than Somalia. Surely Switzerland is safer than South Africa. And we would be right, because certain places have more numerous or more deadly threats than others. But where we go wrong is when we begin to think that safe is a country. When we talk about countries and continents, we tend to use these really broad brush strokes. Oh, Iran is dangerous, or Africa is unsafe. And these are huge places, continents. And when we use broad brush strokes, we create a problem which is highlighted when we apply that same thinking to our own country. Is the UK unsafe? I know Americans and Europeans right now who are putting off a trip to the UK because of the recent terror attacks in London. Now, you and I might think, well, that's a bit silly. The UK is more than London. If they're concerned about London, they can come to Bristol or Bath, Cardiff, Edinburgh, Oxford, Cambridge. But you and I do the same thing to other countries simply because we don't know them very well. A bomb goes off in Indonesia, and we write off the entire country as dangerous. We're extremely influenced by a single event, and the media, which is usually how we know about that event, has no interest in putting crime, health risks, or terrorism into perspective. And in general, the less we know about a place, the more likely we are to unhelpfully, unhelpfully extrapolate that out to a national level. I experienced this personally about five years ago when I moved to Pakistan. I didn't know very much about the country, uh, but people were happy to inform me. Have you seen Zero Dark Thirty, the story about Osama bin Laden's assassination in the Pakistani city Abdabad? Or they would say, have you watched the TV series Homeland, which has a season about American spies set in uh, Pakistan? Hollywood, the media, painted a bleak picture. Terrorism, bombings, murder, mayhem, an unsafe country. So I arrived expecting the worst. And then nothing happened. I mean, nothing. There were no Taliban in the hedges. There were no shootouts in the streets. I lived in Islamabad in Lahore for three years, and I never really once felt personally threatened or unsafe. In fact, in terms of gun violence, I was more at risk in Washington, D.C. than I was in Islamabad. Why? Because when it comes to safe, the threats or the dangers which are present in a place are only half the story. The other half is us. If safe isn't a place and it isn't a country, what is it? Safe is the interplay between the dangers which exist somewhere and ourselves. We are incredibly important in the equation of safe. Now, you and I have hundreds of characteristics which make up who we are. Age, gender, nationality, religion, our jobs, 
how we dress, how we behave, how long we're somewhere. And any one of these things can keep us safe in one place and make us vulnerable someplace else. In Islamabad, I wasn't vulnerable to gun violence. Armed robbery, which happened rarely, usually occurred at night or when someone was alone. And I didn't have a reason to be alone at night in Islamabad. But someone else who had different characteristics, maybe they were Pakistani, maybe they had a night job, would have been vulnerable to gun crime. Let me give you another example. Me, I'm a middle-aged American white woman. I don't feel unsafe or vulnerable if I'm pulled over for a traffic violation in America. But someone else with different characteristics, say a young black American man, would feel unsafe and would feel vulnerable. But take him and I, put us in a different situation, say, a neighborhood of Nairobi or a neighborhood of Chicago or DC. And I, the same middle-aged American white woman, might feel safe walking down the street. Whereas my young black American friend could potentially do the same thing unnoticed. If we're in the same place and we have the same threats present, our safety is affected differently because who we are. Who we are, how we behave, and, how, and what we're doing all interrelate with the threats there to either protect or threaten us. And that is what safe is, no matter where you are in the world. Now, you might be thinking, well, all this is great in the abstract, but um, you still haven't told me whether I should take that trip to Hawaii or Sharm el-Sheikh or Istanbul. So before I finish, I want to give you a few practical steps that you can take to help you make that decision. First, take responsibility for your safety and security. No one is going to be able to answer that question for you, should I go? No one is out there analyzing your safety. The tour company wants to sell you a tour, and the airline a ticket, and the media its advertising, and the government its foreign policy. You are the only person who's going to be thinking about you. So own that decision. Second, be specific about where you're going and what could harm you there. You're not going to Europe or even to France. You're going to Paris. What threatens people in Paris? Crime, travel scams, health risks. It could be something that the news regularly reports on, or it could be something you've never even heard of. You can Google it, you can ask someone who's been there, but try to dig a little bit deeper than the initial headlines that the internet search will throw at you, because we can all get consumed with worrying about these big bangs, getting kidnapped, ambushed, carjacked, murdered by terrorists, and we overlook the things which could actually harm us or kill us. Things like riding in a taxi without a seatbelt, riding on a scooter without a helmet, dehydration, malaria, drinking and driving, drinking and swimming, drinking and jumping off balconies, which apparently is a thing now. Third, know what makes you vulnerable. If safe is the interplay between the threats which are present in a place and ourselves, then the question isn't, is Lahore safe or is London safe? It's, is London safe for me? It's about the specifics of you as a person and your trip. Are you moving there or are you going there for two weeks? Are you living with your family or are you staying in a hotel? Do you speak the language? Safety is personal. Fourth, think about how you reduce your risks at home and determine if you can do the same thing abroad. As I mentioned, you keep yourself safe from some incredibly deadly things every day. Can you do the same thing abroad? Can you keep yourself safe from crime, 
from car accidents, just like you do at home. By taking anti-malarial tablets, can you keep yourself safe from malaria? And if the answer to these things is yes, then take that trip. And if the answer is no, or the risks or threats are beyond what you're comfortable with, then don't go. But the difference is, is that you are in control of your life and your travel plans. They're not being dictated to you by the media or rumors or hearsay that your friends and family have heard about a place, or even your own fears about a terrorist attack. The world is an amazing place, and travel is more accessible to more of us than ever before. What a shame it would be if we didn't take advantage of that because we didn't understand our own safety. Because we thought we had no control over it. Let's stop asking, "Where is safe?" Because safe isn't a place. Safe is where we are and who we are. In the story of Safe, you and I are the main characters. Thank you.